nerds, get ready to dive deep into the murky waters of the DC Universe as we unravel the mysterious madman known as Solomon Grundy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Isn't he that old school super friends guy with the purple pants and questionable fashion choices? Well, hold on fellas, because there's more to Grundy than meets the eye. Sure, he might have been a beefed up henchman for the Legion of Doom back in the day, but this ain't your grandpa Solomon Grundy. No sir. Peel back those layers of grime and moss, and you'll discover a character as intricate as a Rube Goldberg machine. Picture DC's twisted response to the Hulk, but with a dash of eerie charm and a pinch of ghastly intrigue. In this video, we'll dissect Solomon Grundy's zombalicious physiology, if you will. What makes this guy tick? Is it all just reanimated muscles and undead moans? Or is there more going on beneath the decrepit surface? Prepare to be surprised, because Grundy is as multifaceted as the most intricate comic book plotline. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Cyrus Gold to Solomon Grundy. It's 1894, and we're in the spooky, fog-covered slaughter swamp. Not the ideal vacation spot, mind. In this murky marshland, a wealthy merchant named Cyrus Gold met his untimely end. Yup, his fellow associates pulled the old murder card on him, and things took a turn for the undead. Fast forward 50 years, like way past the Roaring Twenties in the Space Age, and guess who decides to make a surprise comeback? That's right, old Cyrus Gold rises from the grave, because he's got a bone to pick with the afterlife. But Mr. Gold's memory isn't what it used to be. It's like the guy hit the reset button and forgot most of his past life. Zombie amnesia is a thing now, apparently. So, with no recollection of who he once was, our not-so-friendly neighborhood undead dude stumbles upon a couple of escaped criminals hiding out in the swamp. And you know how the saying goes, finders keepers, losers dead. Gold, now a huge shambling figure, didn't waste any time giving those two criminals a one-way ticket to the after-afterlife. He then pulls a quick costume change. With the criminal attire now on his back, he stumbles into a hobo camp like he's looking for a cold brew and a place to crash. Naturally, the camp folks are curious and ask him his name. Talk about selective memory, because he can only remember that he was born on a Monday. As luck would have it, one of the campers starts spouting off about that old nursery rhyme character, Solomon Grundy. The name must have struck a chord with our half-forgotten, resurrected friend, because he decides to take it on like a champ. From that moment on, he's Solomon Grundy, the undead dude with a new lease on death. Self-sustaining Solomon. Oh, absolutely. Solomon Grundy is no ordinary mortal, since he's been brought back from the beyond through some good old magic mojo. He's pretty much immune to all the nasty stuff that plagues us regular humans. Say goodbye to pesky diseases and ailments, because Grundy's got that covered. Now, here's where it gets fascinating and a bit creepy. This guy doesn't have to worry about munching on burgers or sipping his favorite soda. Nope. He's not interested in the finer culinary delights of the world. Eating, drinking, breathing, and sleeping? Nah, not really his style. Although Grundy might not need sustenance, he's had some strange sleepovers in the sewers. But when you're a giant, reanimated corpse dwelling in a swamp, you can't help but get a bit territorial. Grundy's turf is the marsh, and he doesn't take kindly to uninvited guests. Intruding humans? Yeah, he's not afraid to make them the main course on his undead menu. The bottom line is this. Grundy's a walking, talking, well, sorta. Corpse with an expiration date that's about as distant as Superman's home planet. He can go for decades without breaking a sweat, without needing to eat, and without battling an eye at the concept of oxygen. It's like he's playing life on an easy mode while the rest of us mere mortals struggle to hit continue. Why did the swamp not kill him? You see, there's some serious magic mojo lurking in those swampy depths, and it decided to play mix and match with Gold's body like a science experiment gone wild. The result? The birth of Solomon Grundy, the powerhouse of superhuman strength and stamina. But that's not all. Grundy's body decided to pull a Freaky Friday with the swamp's wood, making him tougher than a grumpy hawk facing Monday traffic. Even the mighty power ring of the Golden Age Green Lantern, Alan Scott, couldn't leave a scratch on Grundy, thanks to his newfound wooden invulnerability. Let's not forget, we're in the realm of magic here. Grundy's powers are fueled by the mystical stuff that dreams are made of, elemental energy pulsating through his reanimated form, like an undead battery. It's like he's living on some perpetual magic life support, giving him the ultimate one-up against regular mortality. But in some versions of the story, Grundy pulls off a green thumbs up and becomes a bona fide plant elemental, like our leafy friend Swamp Thing, like a VIP pass to Mother Nature's self-regeneration spa. Hang out in the swamp, soak up the green energy, and voila! 
He's good as new and ready to take on whatever superhero dares cross his path. With a dash of magic, a pinch of wood fusion, and a heaping helping of elemental energy, this undead powerhouse has got it all figured out. The Wooden Weakness, Solomon Grundy, the undead brute with a taste for crime and a body made of swampy wood. Yeah, you heard that right. So picture this, Grundy crawls his way out of the infamous slaughter swamp, and he's not in the mood for a leisurely stroll. With his newfound super strength and invulnerability, he's like the big bad boss of the marsh. But who's that in the flashy green getup with a fancy ring? It's none other than Alan Scott, the original Green Lantern, ready to lay down the law. Armed with his powerful ring, he decides to take a swing at Grundy and shut down the party. Well, let's just say his ring didn't get the memo about Grundy's wooden secret. After a few failed attempts to subdue this not-so-jolly green giant, Alan Scott turns detective mode on. Later, Alan confronts Grundy at a train yard, and he's ready to show this swampy specter who's boss. But this time, he ain't using his shiny power ring. And with a well-timed move, he sends Grundy hurtling into the path of an oncoming train, and the day is saved. The reason his ring couldn't quite handle Grundy was that pesky wooden weakness. See, Alan's ring is all-powerful, except when it comes to wood. And guess what? Cyrus Gold, aka Grundy, was essentially a walking, talking tree trunk, courtesy of the swamp's magical transformation. No wonder the ring couldn't get a grip on him. So there you have it, the tale of why Green Lantern's ring had a tough time taking down the mossy menace. Solomon in Space Can Solomon Grundy survive in the vast expanse of space? Well, strap on your space helmets, and let's find out. In the hallowed pages of Superman comic issue 301 from 1939, we witness a clash of the Titans, Grundy going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Man of Steel himself. And let me tell you, Grundy is not one to back down from a challenge. He's giving Superman a run for his money, showing off that brute strength and tenacity. But Superman, being the clever hero he is, knows that sometimes Braun alone won't cut it. He decides to use Grundy's Achilles heel, his lack of brains, to his advantage. I mean, it's not like Grundy has a PhD in quantum physics, right? Using some classic Clark Kent charm and a Grundy costume, Superman pulls off the ultimate bluff. He convinces our mossy friend that he is Solomon Grundy from this alternate reality that he stepped in, and he totally gets Grundy's feelings of loneliness. Smooth move, Supes. Superman takes Grundy on a one-way ticket to Luna, the moon. No suit, no oxygen support, just good old lunar vibes. And guess what? Grundy seems perfectly fine. So how the heck does Grundy manage to survive in the vacuum of space without a spacesuit or any of that high-tech gizmos? Well, fellas, it's time for a bit of speculation. Our lucky guess, if you will. Grundy, my friends, is a walking wonder of self-sustainability. He's like a cosmic party of one, where the rules of nature bend just for him. He doesn't need all those fancy gadgets and life support systems. He's just that cool. Emotions, yay or nay? Who would have thought that Solomon Grundy, the towering undead behemoth, could have a soft spot for friendship? But hey, even a nine-foot-tall monster deserves a buddy, right? Grundy's trudging along, doing his lumbering thing, when he stumbles upon Bizarro, the zany, imperfect clone of Superman. Now, Bizarro is the complete opposite of the Man of Steel, and I mean everything, including the smarts department. But that doesn't stop him from giving friendship a shot. Bizarro puts on his best, hey pal, face, and tries to befriend Grundy, offering his hand in a gesture of camaraderie. And boy, does that rub Grundy the wrong way. He gets all riled up and decides to show Bizarro who's boss, or so he thinks. A clash of the titans all over the city. Destruction, mayhem, and all that stuff. But here's where it gets interesting. In a twist, they crash through a greenhouse, and a flower pot lands right on Bizarro's head. It's like slapstick comedy at its finest, and they both find it absolutely hilarious. That's the moment when the magic of friendship starts to bloom. With the ice broken, Grundy and Bizarro decide to call a truce and put the smackdown on the idea of fighting. Instead, they opt for the tastier option, a hot dog cart hijacking. Imagine a pair of monstrous BFFs chomping down hot dogs while watching the sunset. Who would have thought, right? Brain brain, go away. While Solomon Grundy may be a hawking powerhouse, he's not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. Yep, when it comes to brain power, Grundy's got some serious limitations. You see, despite his near-unstoppable nature, Grundy's got a weak spot in the old noggin department. His mind is about as simple as a one-panel comic strip, making him an easy target for manipulation, trickery, and all those classic villain mind games. You know how it goes. The baddies love to use Grundy like a big, green-battering ram to get the dirty work done. Heck, on some occasions, he's straight-up puppeteered by a mastermind villain to do their bidding. 
Case in point, in the comic Superman-Batman Public Enemies, Lex Luthor decides to stir up some trouble by slapping a million dollar bounty on Superman and Batman's head. Well, leave it to Gorilla Grodd, the telepathic gorilla, to seize this golden opportunity. He cracks out the mind control skills and hijacks Solomon Grundy like a remote controlled tank. Grundy becomes nothing more than a pawn, spewing out words that might make you think he's become the next Shakespeare. Okay, maybe not quite. Grundy, under Grodd's mind control, almost sends Batman for an unwanted underwater tour. The Dark Knight is just about to take a long swim. Thankfully, he turns the tables on Grundy's puppeteer. Grodd's control slips, and Grundy goes back to being the dumb as a brick powerhouse we know and love. Energy Sucker Solomon Grundy isn't just a lumbering giant. He's got some nifty energy tricks up his moss-covered sleeves. Say hello to energy absorption and manipulation. Now, Grundy's got this neat little ability called energy transference. It's like he's got an invisible energy straw, and he can slurp up all sorts of power from his surroundings. He's like the reverse Energizer Bunny, but with an insatiable appetite for all things energetic. But it's not exactly a conscious choice for a not-so-smart, but oh-so-powerful Grundy. His energy game is more of a happy accident. It's like he's fumbling around in the dark, accidentally absorbing energy here and there without even realizing the full extent of his might. And that's what makes it even more intriguing. Grundy's like the kid who got a super cool toy but hasn't quite figured out all its bells and whistles. If he ever fully taps into this energy mastery, watch out fellas, things are gonna get wild. Can Solomon Grundy reproduce? There are various versions of our mossy friend in DC Comics, and while some remain a mystery in the love department, there's one version where things take a tragic turn. In this particular iteration of Earth 2, Grundy led a rather ordinary life. He had a wife, a normal job at the local butcher shop, and a morally dubious boss named Henry Pittens. But alas, life took a twist when Grundy's wife experienced a horrifying incident at the hands of Henry. Grundy's wife, after an unsettling encounter, ran out of the shop in distress. However, she was eventually coerced back, and what followed was a heartbreaking tragedy. Hours later, Grundy found his wife standing on a conveyor belt, holding a knife to her own throat, overcome with regret and disgrace. Naturally, Grundy's heart shattered into a million pieces, and in his grief-stricken rage, he went on a rampage. His butcher knife became a weapon of vengeance as he swiftly massacred his boss and other employees in a burst of fury. Just like any other biological organism, Grundy was capable of being in a romantic relationship and reproducing in the past. But given his current state, his changed physiology, no need for oxygen or food, it's safe to say that the chances of him having offspring now seem slim to none. Dimension Hopping Solomon Grundy's got a supernatural passport to dimension hopping. Yeah, you heard that right. This mossy friend has a one-way ticket to travel across Earth 2 and Earth 1. Way back when, in the mystical slaughter swamp, some seriously cosmic energy decided to grant him dimensional tour guide abilities. But he can only unleash this power while chilling in the good old slaughter swamp. Yep. It's like his very own magical launch pad. So, if you're ever looking for Grundy and he's not answering his cell, chances are he's having a swampy vacation in the dimensions. Back from the dead, Grundy, the ultimate embodiment of a zombie, is brought back to life by some mystical mojo. He's like the undead super dumb hawk, who just keeps going and going, until, well, you hit him with the big guns. Batman, our brooding cape crusader, once decided to play barbecue master and tossed Grundy into a blast furnace. Yep. He gave him the fiery treatment, but even that wasn't enough to keep Grundy down for the count. Then there's Red Tornado, with a wind speed that would make Usain Bolt jealous. He decides to whip up a 350 mile per hour windstorm to tear Grundy apart. Sounds brutal, right? Well, it was. But guess what? Grundy still rises from the swamp like it's just another day at the office. Oh, and the big blue boy scout himself, Superman. Even the Man of Steel couldn't resist putting Grundy through the ultimate impaling experience. But you guessed it. This mossy friend is still up for another round of swamp shenanigans. Here's the thing. Grundy might get destroyed seemingly on several occasions, but he's got some next level revival powers. He just keeps coming back, like a Groundhog Day. Each time he rises again, he's a bit different from the last. Sometimes docile and dim-witted, other times malicious and murderous. It's like you're playing Grundy Roulette, never knowing which version you're gonna face.
Biting the dust, Solomon Grundy is like the heavyweight champion of scary villains in the DC Universe. He's got that ruthless vibe that sends shivers down the spine. And let's face it, when it comes to straight up fights, Grundy's got a track record that would make even the most battle-hardened heroes quake in their boots. From the murky depths of the swamp to the gritty streets of Gotham, Grundy's got street cred as a stone-cold killer. He's not just a villain, he's a nightmare. Now let's get one thing straight, heroes and Grundy have duked it out, and some of our favorites found themselves on the receiving end of a serious beatdown. I mean, taking a punch from Grundy is like being hit with a wrecking ball. It's gonna leave some massive damage, no doubt. But here's the secret weapon. The heroes have brains. Yeah, they might not have the raw brute strength of Grundy, but they've got the smarts. And let me tell you, Grundy's lack of gray matter has been his Achilles heel time and time again. You know the saying, brains over brawn? Well, it couldn't be more true in Grundy's case. Sure, he might be a challenge to most heroes and on par with the likes of Superman himself, but when it comes to strategic thinking and cunning, he's no match. Time and again, heroes have outwitted and defeated Grundy, showing that even the most intimidating monster can fall prey to some well-placed intellect. From the OG Green Lantern, Alan Scott, who threw him under a train, to animated battles where he bites the dust, Grundy's been knocked down more times than he can count. Marvelous Verdict In conclusion, Solomon Grundy's anatomy is a fascinating subject in the realm of DC Comics. As a reanimated corpse with origins in the mystical slaughter swamp, Grundy's physical form defies regular norms, making him a truly unique and captivating character. His massive, hawking stature, towering at a staggering 9 feet tall, commands attention and instills fear in both villains and heroes alike. However, Grundy's physical prowess is balanced by his limited mind, which renders him easy to manipulate and control. This intriguing dichotomy of raw power and intellect intellectual simplicity adds depth and some freshness to his character. Solomon Grundy's anatomy stands as proof of the boundless imagination of comic creators and the enduring appeal of larger-than-life characters. Until next time, fellas, and if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks, everyone.